Better leave it alone. Okay, he's got to have a sword. Hey, I hope you're doing well. We're gonna jump right into it. Section one, reference. Looking at the reference, we can see that this is a pretty simple model. The base is basically a cylinder, and the top is a tapered cylind cube? Whatever shape this is, the sword itself is cartoonish and simplified down to the basic shapes without any surface detail. Section two, block out. Jumping into Blender, let's start by adding a cube. Set the origin to the bottom and clear the location with Alt-G to get it sitting right on the ground plane. Then scale the cube to the rough dimensions of a human for scale reference. We can move that off to the side for now. Now add in a cylinder for the base of the stone and move the origin to the bottom of the mesh and clear the location so that it's resting on the ground plane. From the side view, adjust the height to be similar to the reference and scale the top surface down a little bit to get the taper on the base. Right click and choose Shade Auto Smooth. For the top portion, we can start with the cube. Move the origin to the bottom and from the side view, snap it to the top of the base we just created. Scale it down to match the reference. To refine the shapes before sculpting, let's scale the cube down on the x-axis to make it thinner, and then add a loop cut with Ctrl R and scale it down to get the taper we see in the reference. To get some thickness on the base and the top, add another loop cut, slide it down and towards the bottom, and then move it slightly up on the z-axis. Do the same for the top. Now add a subdivision surface modifier, add some supporting loop cuts near the edges to refine the shape, and do the same with the cylinder. Before we move on, I want to bring in a reference image to make sure our proportions are somewhat accurate. Looking at it, I can see that the bottom of the base needs to be scaled down a bit to fit the taper of the reference. But otherwise, it looks pretty good to me. Section 3, Sculpting. To prepare our model for sculpting, we first need to apply the modifiers. Select the objects, hit Ctrl A, and choose Visual Geometry to Mesh. Select the base and switch to Sculpt Mode. Go up to the Remesh section in the Properties panel and remesh the base. A value of about one centimeter worked well for me. We don't want the geometry to be too dense at this stage. First, I'll go around the model gently smoothing out the facets we get from remeshing. I don't want to change the overall shape much yet, I'm just giving myself a clean canvas to work on. Now that everything is perfectly smooth, we can mess it up. Using the trim brush, I'll go around the whole mesh, lightly roughing up the surface, making it uneven. Then I'll do the same with the scrape brush. This gives more of a faceted look, like the rock got chipped away. I'll continue this process on the edges, making sure not to overdo it here. Heavily chipped edges can look a bit cliche and overdone. Keep it subtle. At this point, I want to add some secondary details. With the clay strips brush, I'll draw in some basic rock shapes on the sides. Turning on dynamic topology will help here since we're making larger changes to the geometry. Use the grab brush to pull things around to make the rocks less uniform. I'm switching between the crease, scrape, and clay strips brush to block out the details. Right now I'm not exactly sure what shapes I want on the rocks, but as we go along, the forms will gradually emerge. Just trust the process, even if it doesn't look amazing at this stage. Adding a crack here, drawing in a new shape here, flattening this portion. Make sure to have reference images of rocks pulled up like I do on my second monitor. Now I want to give the rocks more volume. Everything's too flat at this point. I'll switch back to the clay strips brush and draw over them again, this time laying the clay down thicker. Then I'll carve some away with the scrape brush and add some faceting. It's easy to make things look too flat when sculpting rocks, so don't be afraid to push and pull the geometry around a lot. You can even use the mask brush, mask off a section you want to turn into a rock, then invert the mask with Control i Now you can use the grab or clay strips brush to pull the section out, creating a nicely refined rock shape. I think the top of the base looks a bit boring, so I'll do this up here as well. Only instead of clay strips, I'll use the layer brush to build up a flatter platform. I think this helps break up the surface and adds more visual interest. Okay, I want to add the sword in now to get a full picture of the model. I'll add in a cube and rotate it to match the orientation of the sword blade. Then I can scale it down to match the width and thickness. I'll start the handle by extruding a small part from the top of the blade mesh with E and then separating it into its own object with P and then selection. Now, working on this new handle piece, I can extrude out the guard, adjust the thickness, and pull the middle part down to match the reference. To get the final shape I want with the guard, 
I can add a subdivision surface modifier and then apply a mean crease of about 0.99 to the edges I want to keep sharp. To get a similar effect on the blade without subdividing, we can just add a small bevel modifier with a few segments. This will give us a subtle highlight on the corners, which helps catch the light and will look good in the end. The grip is a simple cylinder and the pommel is just a sphere. Now things are really coming together. Before I continue sculpting, just to get a better sense of the models so far, I want to add some basic materials. This helps us see a more accurate representation of the whole asset at this point. I'll add a goldish metal for the handle part, a slightly bluish gray color for the blade to make it look metallic in the viewport, and a dark gray for the rocks. Back to sculpting. We can refine the top piece of the stone now using the same techniques we did on the base. We should add an indentation where the sword goes into the stone. This whole process, I'm thinking about storytelling while I sculpt. I'm thinking maybe a lot of people tried to pull the sword out with brute strength. That could be why the stone is more cracked and chipped near the top compared to the base. Maybe someone hit it really hard at the corner here and the rock cracked. And we're done. If you want the final model and the blend files, they're available on my coffee page. The link to that is in the description. And if you have any questions, let me know. Hope you have a good one.